Hello and welcome back third grade scientists. We are continuing our work in unit four on weather and climate. And today I will review the vocabulary words you will see in your lessons for this week. So let's get going. We will review together the academic and content vocabulary for this unit of study and this week's lessons. We will study word meanings, look at examples to help you understand the work you will be doing during your science lessons this week. Here we go. Just a really quick review, academic, the difference between academic and content vocabulary. Remember, academic are the words that you might find in the questions or focuses for the lesson. You will see them throughout your subjects in school. The content words are the words that are specific to weather and climate or to the science lessons that you have this week. First, we will look at some new academic vocabulary. These are some of your lesson objectives for the week. You will see the question, how do engineers design solutions for extreme weather hazards? You notice that the word design is highlighted in red. Another objective for the week is to evaluate the effectiveness of a solution intended to reduce the effects of a weather related hazard. You'll notice in that objective, I have the word evaluate highlighted in red. So those are the two academic words that we will look at this week, design and evaluate. Before we move on to look at the meanings and examples, think about whether or not you've ever heard these words before. Where have you heard them? Have you ever used them yourself before? What do you think they mean? Could you explain their meanings to someone else? Design. Design is a verb or an action word. Design means to make or to draw plans for the structure or form of something. When you're designing something, it's when you're making the plan in your head. And then you might put it down on paper or maybe even on a computer or some sort of technology. Design really is just another word for planning. Let's look at an example of the engineering and design process. So in this process of creating new technology or engineering something to solve a solution, these are designing is part of the plan. So in this planning stage is when you may draw the plans or the design for the structure of whatever problem you're working to solve. Designing is an important part of the engineering process. Evaluate. Evaluate is also a verb or an action word. It's something you can do. Evaluate means to judge or to study carefully. Whenever you hand in your work to a teacher or complete an assessment, they look over your work and evaluate to see how well you understood the material. They're studying your work carefully and making a judgment of your understanding. So an example of an evaluation may look like this. Here's an example of what a teacher may use to evaluate work depending on the quality of the work from a scale of excellent to unsatisfactory. And they're making a judgment of the student's understanding of the material. This is an evaluation. The work they're actually doing is evaluating. Content vocabulary. Let's take a look at some of the important content words for this week's science lessons. These are some words you will learn about during your lessons this week. You will come across the word flood, levy, constraint, and criteria. Before we move on to look at the definitions and examples of these words, stop and think for a moment whether or not you've ever heard or read these words somewhere before. If there's a word in the list that you've never heard before, looking at it in connection to the other words, can you infer its meaning or make a decision of what you think the word might mean? Can you think of any examples that match these words?
Our first word is flood and flood is a noun. A flood is an overflow of water onto land that's not normally underwater. So that's important. It's not just an overflow of water, but it's an overflow of water in a place where there shouldn't be water. So let's take a look at, a, at an example of what a flood might look like. This is a picture taken not too far from here in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is a very urban area with lots of apartment buildings, businesses, and stores, streets that cars need to move on. They should not be covered with water. But here you can see that the streets are underwater and the water is even coming right up to the doors of some of the apartment and office buildings. This is an example of a flood. It's a place where there shouldn't be water, but there's been an overflow of water due to some kinds of weather events. A levy, a levy is also a noun. A levy is actually a solution to prevent a flood. It's an embankment that's built purposely to keep the river water from flooding the land. So when the rivers become too high as a result of rain, too much rain, they can actually overflow onto the land. So a levee is a solution or a technology that's engineered to be built in order to prevent that from happening. So let's look at an example of what a levee might look like. Here's an example of a very large river and you can see without this embankment or raised the part of the land that was built, this water can easily overflow. And even with this embankment, the river is so full of water that some water is actually getting over the levee and you can see that. But without it, it would happen much more often and be can become dangerous. Constraint. Constraint is also a noun. A constraint is something that compels, confines, or restrains. In other words, it's something that keeps you from moving forward in your solution. Another word that means the same thing is restriction. So, for example, you see these chains on this little figure? Those chains are preventing him from moving his arms the way he wants to. So, those chains are an example of a constraint. A constraint is a restriction or something that keeps you from solving a problem. Criteria is also a noun. Criteria are the standards or tests by which to judge or decide. This is an example of a criteria we often use in our learning. I've even created videos to go over this with you. And I'm sure you're all super familiar with success criteria. So think about when do you use success criteria in school? Well, you use it when the teacher is giving you a learning goal or something that you're working towards. And the criteria are all the steps you need to fulfill or follow in order to reach that goal. So it's anytime you make a checklist for a goal you want to achieve, each one of those check marks on your list is a criteria. Wow, these were some really awesome words this week. I hope you had as much fun as I did going over them. And now that you're familiar with those awesome words, you'll be able to use them and understand them during your learning. So keep up your great work, third grade scientists.